War is born of war, there is no war that will end a war, and the disgust the boy caused was war's finger. A fist shoved down the throat. Choose your side and remember that the enemy is not human. The enemy does not have a face, a family. The enemy is nobody's child, nobody's parent. The enemy doesn't have a sister or a brother, and the enemy doesn't feel pity, and neither should you. War is filthy and unhygienic, and nobody talks about how much dirt it causes, about the amount of equipment to be maintained, clothes to be watched, washed and mended, wounds to be disinfected, sheets, tents, fabric, surgical imp implements, hospitals, machines, disposable packaging, bandages, syringes, drip tubes, and the like, endless sacks, trucks, dumps full of rubbish and nobody ever washes many times i almost fainted from the smell of the soldiers feet as they took off their boots it was repulsive and as i pulled off their clothes the most revolting smell rose from their groins a thug so pungent it stopped you in your tracks the stench of urine and excrement mixed with the rusty smell of dried blood the singe of gunpowder and the stink of ancient sweat a filthy man is so entirely repellent but once we had all retreated from around him, as though from a contagious dish, it was strange to note how this Albanian boy suddenly stopped shouting. Just like that, as though he no longer felt any pain, though we hadn't yet had a chance to sedate him, and as though he didn't want us to touch him. So profoundly did the war's spirit reside in every cell of his body, and then his eyelids closed. His legs went limp, and his one arm, too short sputters sucked the last remnants of his strength and he looked very peaceful as he died like a slowly turning whale in its mansion in the sea i've recently finished ebola by Pashtim stachovici i think i said that as close to correct as i'm ever going to and this book was fun like <laughs> this book is so good I, first and foremost, thank you to Vintage for sending this to me. I know I'm a little delayed in reading it, but oh my God, I'm so glad I read it when I did. I could not stop reading this book. So this book centers around two characters, two men that are on either side of a war. You have an Albanian man named Arsim and you have a Serbian man named Milos. So at the start, this is really a story about a love that cannot be between these two men. And it cannot be for many reasons. This is set during the Kosovo conflict. So uh, the Albanians and the Serbs are at war with each other in the former Yugoslavia. And these men are on either side of it. You have a Serb and Albanian. That in and of itself is enough to make this a difficult, you know, romance for anybody. But on top of that, they are queer. And that is not something that is uh, accepted in this society. So th this is a very clandestine love affair that occurs during one summer. But this love affair carries on throughout these men's lives and is sort of haunting in the background. And you're probably expecting me to say if you've never read this book before that there's going to be something at the end that is uplifting or that that these characters are likable in any way no these feel very real these feel like real people with real people problems these are not these are not fictionalized it's not a fictionalized romance where you know there's a happily ever after or like one person's the villain and one person's good or they finally get to understand each other even there is no happily for now there's no happily ever after there's none of that these are two men that are the victims of their society they are the victims of the world around them they are the the victims of their life circumstances Arsim is Albanian and married, is really abusive to her, especially when he finds out that she's pregnant, which by the way is, is a check on your pregnant friends because a lot of times that's when abuse starts. Anyway, moving on. And a lot of his abuse and his anger is because he was abused by his father. And so there's kind of this idea that life is pain. And if you don't have pain, like what is life? But he's really abusive to her. He hits her. He does all these things. And then he will flee for, for periods of time during the summer to Milos's side and Milos's like a little apartment, sort of all of like Giovanni's room where he, that is his refuge, where he can be his like queer self. And he's very loving and kind to Milos and he loves Milos, but he can't be with Milos. And Milos is this young Serbian doctor who is ostensibly like very, like in the beginning, he's very positive and uplifting. He's always telling 
our sim that if he wants to be a writer, he has to tell himself he's a writer. He has to like, he gives him like mantras and self-help and toxic positivity to get him through and to, to keep him focused and to not have so much self-doubt and like imposter syndrome nonsense going on. Like if he believes in himself, he can do it because that's what he did. And that's how he's becoming a doctor, right? Is because he kept saying to himself, I am a doctor. I will be a doctor. I am a doctor. I will be a doctor. And he's doing it. He's going to school. So you've watched this romance butt up between these two men over this summer, but you're also watching sort of the world around them fall apart as the conflict increases and eventually Arsim has to flee. His wife is pregnant again, I believe, and his, like his in-laws come and are like, that's it, you're leaving, we're going to Turkey. This is ridiculous, we're not staying in this, this is unsafe get out of here. And he has to leave. So he has to leave Milos. He's incredibly upset about this. And he goes to Turkey and uh, a few years pass and he's there and he's still like queer. He didn't stop being queer, but it leads him to make some really terrible choices, like meeting people in chat rooms. And he eventually ends up meeting somebody who is underage and that gets him in trouble. There's spoilers here, but I read the book and come back. He meets a kid who's underage. He doesn't know that he's underage, but anyway, they like go somewhere, they do things because like these are the kinds of things that happen when you suppress people from being themselves is that they then make really dangerous and poor choices. And anyway, so this kid becomes very obsessed with him. He's not very nice to him because Arsim is not a nice person. <laughs> not that he doesn't deserve love and stuff, but like he is not a very nice person. Anyway, so he ends up getting in trouble for having relationship with a young boy. He goes to jail. He's not allowed back in Turkey. He has to be go back to Kosovo. He has to go back there. So years have passed. This war has, has, has sort of ended or calmed down in some way. And like times are different. It's a different time back home. And so he goes back home and he's readjusting to that life. And while he's there, he eventually like gets a job and he does all these things. And one day he thinks he sees Milos and he like chases some man on the street. It's not Milos, but he like cannot stop thinking about Milos. And eventually he goes and he finds him and you think he's going to be finally be like the good guy. And he is a hundred percent not, I'm not going to end the rest. We like ruin the rest of this. But like when he finally gets Milos back in his life, he is no better than he was before. He's like, I am still really bad about this. <laughs> like what he does to Milos. While those chapters following Arsim are going, you're getting these journal entries from Milos because Milos ends up being a doctor during the conflict. And he's very upset. And he's got a lot of trauma in his life. And through these diary entries, because he's in this hospital after the war for people who are not doing all right, because he's mentally like very broken. And he, you find out like all the traumas he experienced at home. You find out just how broken Milos really is as a person. And it's, it's really quite sad uh, that the war quote from the beginning is from Milos's diaries. And it's, it's a very bleak outlook. On life, And I don't think that that is something that is unheard of in, from people that have been in war. Uh, I don't think that that's something that would be crazy out of somebody who has experienced a heavy amount of trauma from his parents. Um, there was a lot of sexual abuse in his, in his past. And it feels like that summer with Arsim was like a summer where he was trying to desperately hold on to happiness and just couldn't because of everything else that he had to fight against or we have to fight against to be happy. And there is a wonderful passage in here, which if I can find it, I will find it, where they actually talk about happiness and like if anybody can ever be happy. Maybe happiness is knowing that happiness doesn't exist, he says eventually. And sorrow is the wisdom to endure it. He continues and turns to look out at the sea. I've been thinking about the last book you read. The way every character was searching for happiness and all of them eventually found it, he adds and touches his hair. They actually made me angry. Though I told you I liked the book and I'm sure I did like it a bit. Really? Yes, it was as if they thought that every moment they were unhappy was time wasted. As if happiness was their incontrovertible destiny, you know? That's not how it goes. At least I don't think so. Yes, I reply. I don't think so either. Most people aren't like that. No, they're not. Yes, I see it every day. It's easier to submit to the to tyranny than it is to fight against it. That requires so much more, he says, and exhales a long breath as though through a straw. I 
I like you very much, I stammer and remove my hand from under his t-shirt. Again, he turns and looks at me and squints and grips my hand. I like you a lot too. This is the most perfect day of my life, I think, and the happiness we feel in that evening, we both know it. The sensation as I kiss his neck, the person I am as I smell his hair, the gazes we cast upon each other, the taste of beer left on the balcony table, and the way our lips touch right there in the flames of the fading evening. It will never end, even if there's nothing left of it by morning. So there's this whole idea of like how happiness is just so fleeting and how bleak life really is. And I want to be like some sort of very <laughs> sad and dark and stoic person and be like, yeah, life is just like, you know, it's just so miserable and like jaded and blah. But there, <laughs> it kind of is like you have to really fight for happiness, especially certain people in during certain times and during certain things like and this really speaks to that when you have so many things against you so many things working against you how much you have to fight to even have a moment on a balcony overlooking the ocean where you feel truly happy how many people truly have that moment over and over and over again consistently through life especially people that have been victims of trauma, of victims of abuse. Um, you know, Arsim is physically abused by his parents. Milos is sexually abused by his brother and his father. There is so much damage and trauma in that. And then they are living in a world that is just upheaval. They are two people who should hate each other. They are two people that are supposed to be enemies. They are two people that are not supposed to fall in love for so many reasons, and they do. And they get this moment, and you know that it's fleeting, but they had it. This book is just brilliant. I, I love this book so much. I don't think it's going to be for everybody because I think that there is a lot of I'm going to keep saying bleak, but there's a lot of bleakness in this book that is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Some people don't want that. But if you really want a very sort of raw book that's going to make you feel things, like you're going to feel things. You're going to feel sad for these characters. You're going to be mad at these characters. Like I freaking hate them both. You're very sympathetic to Milos for a while, but like Milos isn't even that great of a guy. Compared to Arsim, he's slightly better, but like, is that, what is that? I really love this and I'm so grateful that I have it <laughs> in my little library here and that Vintage sent this to me. Uh, this, this was so good. This was such a fantastic, fantastic book. And I'm very curious to read his other two books because I think he has two more. I think one's called Crossing and the other one I do not remember the name of off the top of my head because I'm an oldie. Uh, my cat uses Yugoslavia. This is a time period that I was on the planet for but I don't know a lot about because they were kind of like news clippings or like flashes on the news that I saw growing up but I didn't understand what was occurring and now as an adult I'm seeing more literature probably because a lot of the people that were living through those things are adults now and they are writing and reflecting on their 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 own experiences and so I'm seeing more themes of this especially as I read more translated lit so I definitely need to know more about what occurred so I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on that this was fantastic I hope that you give it a shot if it does if it does sound like something you would like I hope you give it a shot anyway uh, join the patreon if you'd like we are reading this month in January we are reading briefly a delicious life I keep forgetting that name um there's a link to the patreon down below uh otherwise please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video whatever it may be because it's my channel and i can do whatever i want bye so just sit with me talking to the night until the morning building can't mystery i don't think i